G'day ZKD here and welcome back for another Path of Exile Awakening guide. Recently I made a guide to what I consider to be one of the fastest ways to level any spellcaster or summoner with Firestorm Flame Totem. That was designed to be a self-contained setup, it basically doesn't matter which build you're playing, the passive tree is largely irrelevant. Uh, as long as you have enough intelligence and strength to run the gems and a little bit of dexterity, then it's uh, easy to uh, run that on pretty much any build. And uh, indeed, my passive tree didn't matter. Yep. People were pretty curious about what I was playing and what I was transitioning to, and once they found out that I was playing a, uh, a Summon Raging Spirits Minion Hybrid Summoner, I, uh, you know, people got curious about how I'd be making the switch over from Firestorm Flame Totem to Minions. And being a Summoner noob myself, it was uh, a big learning experience for me. So I thought I'd share some of what I learned with you guys about making the swap, the, making the jump, making the commitment to being a full-fledged Summoner. So if you're looking for a full-on guide to this style of play, Summon Raging Spirits Minion Summoner Hybrids, then uh, I'm going to defer to the Master of Summoning himself, Angry AA. Now, uh, as I said, I'm only a bit of a noob when it comes to summoning, and I've learned a lot from Angry AA's guides and from talking to him in person as well. He's a very friendly guy. He's a streamer as well, and he does make YouTube videos. So I'll link this guide down in the description below. If you want to know like the end game setups and all of that, then uh, I do recommend referring to this. This video is mostly going to be focused on how to make the actual swip, uh, swatch, the swip, the swap, the swap <laughs> to full summoner. So there are four parts to making the jump to full-fledged SRS Summoner. You need your SRS setup, your Summon Raging Spirits. You need your Stygian Revenants or your Spectres. You need your Zombie Flesh Wall, and then you need your Aura setup. And then this is a combination of gear, skill gems, and a couple of passives to make life a little easier. Now you're gonna make this swap at level 55 plus. Now the reason for that is that plus two fire staves become available then, plus two and plus three uh, become available at 55. I made the switch at 58 myself because the Stuff I happened to get this one here uh, had a level requirement of 58 when I grabbed it because of it. It had a higher base or a higher affix, so you can swap anywhere after 55 is going to be pretty comfortable. Now, technically, you can level as a summoner right from the very beginning of the game, and GGG has been working on improving the leveling experience for a summoner. But can compared to Firestorm Flame Totem, even if you're investing in some summoning passives, uh, Firestorm Flame Totem is going to be uh, a much smoother, much more powerful leveling experience. So I think in terms of efficiency, swapping over at level. 55-ish plus is going to be uh, a much better experience as a summoner. So the Summon Raging Spirits setup is Summon Raging Spirits, Melee Splash, Spell Echo, and Minion Damage. If you can get a quality SRS, something like 10% plus, then that is a very nice boost. This gives minion movement speed, which for SRS, that actually kind of directly rates, uh, relates to clear speed. And it also is kind of like a multiplier for their duration because minion, they have to travel from you to the enemies they're gonna attack. And the quicker they do that, the longer they stay up while they're attacking the enemy. So uh, it's a very nice boost to get at least some quality on a Summon Raging Spirit. And getting a 10 quality plus SRS is not, not too pricey, at least if you're looking at the lower qualities. It starts to get pricey if you're looking at like 15 plus. So the plus two fire staff can most easily be obtained by looking on poe.trade. This is a search website that uh, searches people's various shop threads for items. You're gonna go to your league and then search as a staff. Then you're gonna type in here, fire, and you can select plus level of socketed fire gems. And you're gonna type a two over in this box for the minimum. And then searching online only will help you find people that are currently selling that item. So then you can hit the search button. And then the easiest thing to do is going to be to search by value. If you click on one of these currency amounts here, you can actually search by the cheapest items available. Now, plus two fire is the, the most important thing. You can literally just go with that. But if you can get a little bit of car speed, it's gonna be a nice little advantage. Get, get those SRS out a little bit faster. And uh, if you need any resistances, then you can potentially get some here. I managed to pick up this one here very cheap. It was like a chaos or two. Um, and it had car speed and one resistance. And I was able to add another resistance as well using uh, vegan uh, crafting at the crafting bench in my hideouts. So uh, that worked out pretty nicely, and this is damn fine all the way up pushing into endgame uh, as I can save up and build up some currency and farm and work towards getting a plus three fire staff or a plus two fire with plus one spell gems uh, and then get that like five and six linked for endgame. The next thing is your zombie setup, and this is gonna be done in a plus one minion gem helmet. Now, if you can find a cheap plus two, then you can do so. I'll, go, I'll give you guys a look here at the plus one helmet that I went to uh, at the time when I made the switch. It was just this one here with a decent life roll on it and a little bit of resistances. I knew when I bought this, I could add a bit of lightning resist that I needed to, so it worked out nicely. Now, you're gonna want either an energy shield or an armor energy shield base. Both of those are good, and the reason for that is mostly the socket colors. It makes it nice and easy to get the correct socket 
protocols. You need one red socket, uh, that's easy to do on an ES base, and it's uh, even easier to do on an armor ES base. Uh, if you're looking at like an evasion one or evasion armor, which you'll see a lot of cheap ones of those, don't fall into that trap, because you're going to have to spend, you know, a couple dozen chromatics getting the right colors, and that can be uh, a little expensive and it multiplies the, the cost of the actual item. You want this to be as cheap as possible. So, Similar idea, just look for helmets on poe.trade and just search for, you know, plus one minimum, minion as a minimum, type in life and type in resistances and uh, see what you can get for, a, you know, one to two chaos maybe. The actual zombie setup is just zombie with minion life, minion and totem elemental resistance and fortify. This just makes super tanky zombies that basically don't die and act as a meat shield for you. And that's what they are essentially there for uh, in a summon raging spirit setup like this. It's pretty cheap and efficient to get these zombies up and the, the survivability boost they give, especially in with how difficult and dangerous the game has uh, gotten now in 2.0 is uh, a real blessing as a summon raging spirits character. It allows you to more freely summon your uh, SRS and uh, <laughs> Uh, it allows you to get those out without dying. So the third thing is your Spectre setup. This is Raised Spectre with Chain, Minion Damage, and Spell Echo. And this is the setup used for Sir G and Revenants. If you're using a different setup, like Fireballs, you're going to use something like GMP instead. Then you're using Evangelist, you're going to use a different setup again. Now, the item that is uh, very ideal for switching over it when you are making the swap is going to be Bones of Allure. Now, unfortunately... Uh, Minion setups and uh, stuff like this is becoming very popular in 2.0. I think that uh, SRS hybrid minion summoners and even just minions in general, especially with the strength of Sajin Revenants at the moment, the Spectres we're using, uh, are very, very popular. So this item has become very expensive, despite being a very common and uh, you know reasonably easy to find item. Uh, demand is high. So what I recommend is just paying to get uh, a low roll one, trying to find a cheap one. Now, unfortunately, whenever I make guides like this, prices on these sorts of things do tend to go up if I ever recommend a specific unique. So if you want to hold off on it, then uh, you can, but the plus one Spectre, is a huge boost to clear speed. So hopefully those of you guys that managed to get in early and uh, even just pick up a low move speed roll for cheap is gonna be better than not having one. So uh, good luck with that one guys. But uh, hopefully you can uh, either have the currency once you've leveled up to here to get a pair of Bones of Allure or to uh, potentially uh, save up and get a pair later. Uh, it's not not 100% necessary. This zombie is not mandatory at all. The plus one spectre is very nice, but you can get away with two uh, spectres. When you get death attunement there, you'll have two spectres and you'll still have pretty good clear speed with that. This is just a very nice boost, but not mandatory out of the three things. You definitely want that plus two fire gems and you definitely want at least a plus one minion helmet, if not a plus two. But this one is very nice, but not mandatory. So in terms of the passive tree, what I had when I made the swap, I had Grave Pact, and then I shortly after picked up Death Attunement. A little bit after that, to help keep my zombies alive, I picked up Herd of the Flock, and uh, that was pretty much it. You know, by that point, I already had Eldritch Battery, Mind Over Matter, and Zelt's Oath. The only things I didn't have at the time were, I'm starting to get this skill duration cluster now, and I didn't have this life cluster here, this life ES cluster, I've picked that up later. Uh, and I didn't have Lord of the Dead. So since making the swap, I've picked up Lord of the Dead. I picked this up just slightly after making the swap and same as uh, this cluster here. And I've been picking this up and this up after the swap. But the rest of the traveling of the tree, Templar area, you know, all the major keystones, all of that I had when I made the swap. You can have most of the outline of your build done by 55. The other thing that might be helpful to note is that if you are not in Cruel Act 4 and don't yet have access to the Stygian Revenants, which you're gonna get from the Harvest. And uh, I'll kind of quickly run through how to uh, do this setup here. Uh, the important thing to note is that Spectres are based on zone level uh, and they're, it's restricted by your Desecrate level if you're using Desecrate to summon them. So you need to make sure your Desecrate is leveled up because although this is a level 57 zone, if your Desecrate is like level requirement 40, then you're going to have low level Spectres. But if you do have that setup going, then you can uh, you can desecrate around here until you get a Stygian Revenant, and you can hold Corpse Targeting. Try and aim for the, the toes of their feet so it makes it easier to target them. And then you can summon. Make sure you remove Echo before you summon so you don't accidentally summon something that you don't actually want. Uh, so these guys these guys are the ideal. However, if you aren't up to here yet and you're still progressing and you are making the switch in Cruel Act 4, which is a little sketchy, getting through Malachi's Summoner is uh, a great learning experience, but it is tough. Uh, you can make the swap in Merciless Act 1 if you want to. But if you want to make the swap a little bit earlier and you're still getting up to the Harvest or Belly of the Beast and you need a little bit of help, then you can go back to Act 3, Scepter of God, and raise some Evangelists. Those are the bo mobs with a protective bubble. Those guys are an excellent defensive spectre to have and they will help you get through the content up until you can get your Stygian Revenants, which are the real beasts. So I did make the swap 
before fighting Malachi, and I did fight the final bosses of uh, Act uh, 4, Cruel, uh, which is probably one of the biggest hurdles in the game now. Uh, as a fully-fledged summoner, so I fought Comb, Doreso, all of the bosses in the lead-up to Malachi, and Malachi himself as a summoner, and it was a very cool le learning experience, and uh, I might put some highlights on, up of, of those fights on YouTube so you can see how they went and maybe learn some things from them. From someone who's also going through that same learning process, you guys might find that interesting. But uh, if you are kind of, you want to bit of an easier experience then it's not a bad idea to continue with the firestorm flame totem until you make it to act one merciless and make the swap in act one merciless i have to say though once i did get over the hurdle of killing malachi with this style of setup i just absolutely face rolled through act one through three uh you know it's only ne now that i'm kind of like getting geared up again for maps that next that next little bit of hurdle uh that it started to slow down a little bit and even then it's still absolutely destroying things but uh, it's really funny how much of a hurdle Act 4 crew was uh, compared to the rest of the content that I was able to just absolutely destroy with this setup. So guys, if you have any questions about what I've learned about uh, summoning and SRS so far, then feel free to ask in the comments below. It's been a very enjoyable experience and it seems like a very powerful way to play the game in Act 2... Act... what? Act 4 2.0. <laughs> anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.